Well, I guess you could call it a hammer, but I much prefer the term maul. It sort of sounds like a bear, tearing something to shreds bit by bits. But what about when you maul a bear? <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff. Ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, Wild Hearts release is on the horizon, and thanks to the folks over at EA, we've had our hands on an early copy of the game in order to check it out and share some stuff with you all. Not just our thoughts, but also some tips and tricks and just general gameplay that you may be wanting to see before properly diving into the game yourself on release. This is going to be our first in a series of weapon guides that we are doing for the game. I'll keep the spoilers low, and I'll never show a kimono in this video that hasn't been announced or shown in some sort of trailer or footage of the game up to this point. Today's weapon of choice here is called the Maul. It's the big meaty hammer of Wild Hearts and one of the only weapons in the game that can hit its absolute biggest damage hit without much buildup. A lot of the weapons in the game have some sort of gauge that needs to be filled before you can do your biggest possible thing, but the Maul can do it at any given point as long as you nail the combo that it's in without being interrupted by the kimono in front of you. In other words, while it doesn't hit the singular highest number in the game, it can hit one of the largest ones possible with the extreme consistency, and as a result, well, it, it just it feels extremely rewarding to play, and it feels incredible every time you manage to hit with that attack. Put simply, if you like big hammer type weapons, you'll love them all. If you like hitting big numbers frequently, you'll probably prefer them all over most weapons in the game, and if you don't like the sound of building up a gauge to unleash your big attacks, then the maul is definitely one of your best options. So we'll start off here by talking about the generalities of the weapon, going over its whole moveset and what can be done with it, as well as how it interacts with the various basic carrot curry that you have access to. Then we'll talk about the strongest combos, the way that you'll want to actively use it on a hunt in general, and the best things that you can do in each situation. Then at the end, we'll have a slight spoiler section where we'll have a bit of a look at different mall specific skills that you can unlock later in the game that can switch up your playstyle to give you a bit of an idea of how the mall will feel closer to the end game, and the options that will open up to you then. First up, then, let's go over the basic moveset for the weapon. It's worth mentioning that by default, the Maul is a pummel-type weapon. As you can see here, there are three types of damage in the game, cutting, pummel, and piercing, and different damage types have different effectiveness against different kimono. The Maul, again, is pummel by default, but there are a couple of ways to mess with this later on. For example, the one that I'm using in most of this footage is actually a piercing Maul. Starting off, then, if you look at your controller settings, you can see the button that correlates to each term I'll be using here. Your attack one combo with the Maul, is three hits, but this has a couple of variations. If you do it the standard way, it is just three quick hits, but as you see, after each hit, the weapon flashes for a moment. If you press the special attack button during this flash, it's called a Maul Extension. This lengthens the shaft. That's what she said. And the lengthened shaft changes your next attack in the combo up. Consistently, what this does is change the angle that the attack will come from, making it a bit slower to come out as well, and then also do a fair bit more damage as it would if it wasn't extended, as you can see here. If you extend on both the first and second attack, then the third hit of that combo is the big massive hit, which is a giant slam down for ridiculous damage that makes a cool little earthquake effect on the floor, and the hitbox on this is actually massive, and it includes the groundquake part as well. Visually, I love this attack as well because that actual shaft bends. It just, it looks incredible. After that, we have your attack two combo. This is actually only one hit unless you manage to extend it on the weapon flash. If you do so and then press the attack two button again, you will launch yourself into the air and do a flipping attack. Right after the mall hits the ground, it will flash again. And if you hit the extension timing correct here and hit attack two again, it will repeat the flip. This flip is repeatable for as long as you have stamina and the attack itself costs stamina to perform. Then from this position in the air, you can also press attack one to do a downward spinning finisher where you flip end over end until you hit the ground. You can also start this combo by pressing attack two in the middle of attack one combo. For example, if you do attack one, then extend, attack one, then extend, then hit attack two, you go right into the endless flip combo. Then we also have the special attack button. If you do this from a standing position, you will start to spin them all around you with one hit per spin. It drains stamina while you use it. It doesn't do much damage, but you can make this stronger by using it in the middle of your attack one combo. If you extend the maul during the attack one combo, you can then hold the special attack button afterwards to start spinning with the extended maul. This will do a bit more damage and has some extra hits based on how much it goes through the kimono with the spin, and you can even stop the spin to end with attack one and unleash the real big attack at the end of it anyways. As well, a neat little bonus of this effect is you can actually do it to give the maul a ranged attack, surprisingly. If you place basic curry down on the ground and then start to spin right up against them, if you hit the curry with the spin 
and attack it will launch the Karakuri forwards, dealing damage if it hits a kimono. Different Karakuri will have somewhat different effects. The box is the easy one as it only costs one thread, but it only does a small amount of damage. The spring does slightly more damage, but it costs twice as much to make. The glider is the best one that I've found as this actually has a piercing effect that hits multiple times as it passes through the kimono. And this is actually pretty fun to mess with. Better up! That said, there is one more interaction here. The final basic Karakuri that you'll get later in the game is called Celestial Thread, and this lets you jump around while you're in range of it. Funnily enough, you can bat this forward with the maul and then sort of just repeatedly jump towards it at mock speed, and essentially while it lasts, this is one of the fastest forms of movement within the entire game. The actual use of this is super niche, but I thought this was a fun thing to show you for sure. Aside from this, we have the way that the hammer interacts with each of the basic Karakuri as well. With the box attack, your jump attack is that attack one finisher that you can do midair. On landing, you can do an extension to follow up into any of your normal combos. Off of a spring, you actually do one of your aerial flips, and if you extend at the right timing, you can continue the aerial attack 2 combo as normal. While flying, or I'm a glider, and this part is hilarious honestly, you can hold down the special attack button to do the spinning attack while you're flying. Yes, while hanging from the spinning Karakuri, you can spin your hammer yourself until you land. It isn't overly effective, but it's free damage if you happen to be gliding past the kimono anyways, and honestly, it's just funny. And then finally, for the interactive attacks with the Torch Karakuri, when you pass through it, you do a flaming slam, and if you follow it up with attack one, you get an overhead slam that does pretty damn good damage, one of your bigger hits, honestly. With all that covered, what are your most important combos? Well, honestly, the whole aerial shtick you can sort of do with attack two is just not very important. Unless you make a specific build around aerial combat, which is definitely possible with endgame skills, this is entirely incomparable to your ground-based gameplay. It is just a fraction of the damage output. For the most part, Karakuri interactions aren't fantastic for you either, at least compared to what the other weapons can do. None of them really increase your damage much, so for mall gameplay, your Karakuri are more for utility than for damage. The one exception being that torch attack follow-up that is somewhat meaty. The ability to fling Karakuri at Kimono with the spin is really fun, but it is more of a gimmick than an actual effective style of play, though it is situationally useful as a ranged option. The most important thing that Maul has, though, is the attack one combo, of course. In short openings, you just want to hit attack one three times. This does good damage and comes out quickly. In medium openings, you want to take attack one three times, but with one extension in the middle. This makes your final hit a very low spin attack, but it does pretty good damage. Your main output, though, the thing that you will just want to do on repeat forever in an absolutely ideal situation is attack one, extend, attack one, extend, attack one. This combo takes five to six seconds to pull off, and any time that you can feasibly do it, it is simply the best damage that this weapon can put out by a landslide, even if you only hit the final attack, because the final attack is the one that matters. It does so much more damage than anything else this weapon can do. This attack can do upwards of five times the damage of any other mall hit, so this should be your main focus whenever possible. A good tip for this as well is at the start of a fight, a kimono will not engage you unless you attack it first, and because the weapon extends between attacks, it is possible to start any given kimono fight with the third extended hit of that combo to open up with an absolutely nasty punch of damage. You just gotta line up the actual range of the hit so that you don't hit with the first two parts. Honestly, that's all you need to know to be pretty damn effective with this weapon. It's not overly complex in its concept and its mission. It's just the execution of it that takes some careful timing, some good positioning, and awareness of your target's moveset. Now from here, we'll be going over just a couple of the unique Maul weapon skills that you unlock later in the game, so if you want to go in completely blind to even the weapon skills themselves, then look away now, but if not, here we go. One of the biggest and most important skills that I've seen is called Extended Wrap. Okay! No, not you. This boosts the damage of attacks with the Maul that are extended by the percentage notated on the skill itself. The specific hammer that I was using in the King Tusk Hunt gets a 15% boost from this skill, as an example. There is a skill called Helve Extension Training, which says it prevents reeling when using an extended Maul attack, and this isn't quite as all-encompassing as it might sound, but it does prevent flinches from later attacks hitting you while doing an extended attack. There is Power Smash Boost Attack. This boosts the damage of your spinning attacks by the percentage that is notated in the skill. This one specifically is a 20% boost, which isn't bad at all. There is a skill called Rapid Halt, which makes it harder to lose stamina for a while after a successful extension in the Aerial Flip combo. This is important as it means that you can flip more times before you have to stop before you run out of stamina, and that's actually a really interesting concept for making the aerial playstyle viable. After that is a skill called Shockwave. This makes your extended attacks more likely to cause the kimono to go unconscious, which is just a specific type of knockdown. As well, there is a skill called Expert Hitter. 
This makes the Maul extend during the spin after you shoot a few Karakuri at a kimono by hitting them with said spin attack. Then finally, probably the strongest one that I've seen, but definitely requires some skill, is called Tunnel Vision. This shortens the timing window for successfully extending the shaft, but it increases all damage you do by a massive amount for a short time after doing so. With this specific one that I'm sharing you here being a 30% boost to all damage, which is an insane amount of extra damage. All that to say, in the end, there will be multiple ways to build the Maul in Endgame. The straight up attack one extension combo will still probably be the absolute best one, but both an aerial play style and a spin play style will exist and should be reasonably good if you use the skills provided. Overall, I really like the Maul. It is my favorite weapon in the game as of right now, and I have messed with all of them. I hope you're able to find your own favorite weapon here. If you fancy the Maul as much as I do, then I definitely hope this guide was helpful to you, and we'll be releasing guides just like this for every weapon in Wild Hearts over the coming days and weeks, so if this one isn't quite your cup of tea, keep your eyes peeled for the others. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye